with the easy tune drone tuning in iNav was never simpler. You can easily do it with only one or two batteries and have at least okay results. If you don't know how to tune your iNav drone to fly good, this video is for you. The step number one is to ensure that you have the easy tune enabled in iNav. To do it, you have to go to the iNav configurator, go to the easy tune tab and then select on. From now on, instead of tuning the iNav in the track traditional way, you will only have a few values that you will really have to care about. And to be honest, only like three or four of them are really important to have a nice, stable, locked-in tune. Once we have the easy tune enabled, there are a few things that you have to set up before your first flight. First of those is the setting called ratio. This decides of how much of the difference in the tune there will be between the roll and pitch axis. The default value of 110 in my experience is okay for like great majority of different drones. As long as your drone is slightly longer than wider, which is true for almost everyone, 110 value is okay. If not sure, leave it on default. And the second value is the default setting for all of the filters that the easy tune handles. This great greatly depends on your drone. I cannot tell you what's the correct value for your drone because this depends on the frame, on the propellers, on the motors, etc, etc. But for sure, the biggest factor that influences the filter value is the size of the propeller. Luckily, in INAV configurator, there are a few examples of the initial values that are well suited for different sizes of the propellers. Set it to the proposed value and you should be ready to go. Plus, optionally, you can also change the rates. The default values that translate to roughly 600 degrees on roll and pitch is okay for for most intermediate, not so super advanced pilots. And if you do not know that you feel comfortable with higher or lower rates, then just leave it by default. For me, for my freestyle machines, I like to set the rates to the equivalent of the 700 degrees on roll and pitch. If you do not feel very comfortable behind the sticks, then I suggest lowering this value to around 400, maybe 500 degrees per second. It should give you enough of the slow response of the drone that you should not have big problem of handling the drone in the air. And then save, reboot and it's time for the first flight. First flight is critical because during the first flight we have to make sure that our drone is flyable. So set it to acro. By the way, all the tuning procedure will be happening only in the acro mode. Do not change it to the angle or anything like that. We have to tune in acro. Put the drone in a safe place, move away a few meters, arm and try to take off. If the drone took off, it's relatively stable in flight. That means that the initial values should be okay to start the tuning procedure. If, however, you hear oscillations, you hear vibrations, you see that the drone is shaking left to right and in general it doesn't want to lower the altitude, only fly higher, this means that we have to adjust the initial tune. By how much? It depends. My suggestion is to lower the filter HZ by at least 10, lower the rest response one more time for at least 10 and also dumping by the value of 10. Do not touch the other settings for now. Lower the sliders, save, reboot and try to take off again. If the vibrations, oscillation, the basic sound is gone, that means we can start tuning. If not, then try to lower the filter HZ as well as the response and dumping some more. We cannot really start the tuning if the drone is not not flyable. And now it's time to start flying FPV. With every flight you will take, your responsibility will be to try increasing either the responsiveness 
or dumping and every third flight also trying to raise the filter HZ a little. By how much? Well, it depends. I'm usually trying to raise those values by 5. So in the first flight, if you feel that the drone is not vibrating, shaking, doesn't make any strange sounds, then raise the responsiveness by 5, save, reboot and try one more time. If after the flight you haven't noticed that anything bad happened, no vibrations, no oscillations and the motors are not getting hot, then raise one of those three values by the factor of 5. If in the first flight you raised responsiveness, in the second flight raise dumping and in the third flight try to raise filter HZ. Always only one value at a time. At certain point after raising one of the values you will notice that the drone doesn't sound correct, especially after making a rapid maneuver. The drone will just start to make a buzzing sound. This means that the value that you raised for the last time is too high. If in the previous flight the drone started to be noisy, started to shake, the motors are getting hot, lower the value you raised last time by the double you raised it. If usually you are raising by 5 and previously you raised dumping, lower dumping by 10. And you have to continue flying, continue tuning, but with the exclusion of the value that started causing you troubles and you have to lower the sliders. So if first you had to lower dumping, then make Make a few more flights without touching dumping and trying to raise filter and responsiveness a little. In general, we want to raise all those three values to as high as there are no bad signs. No oscillations, no vibrations, no hot motors. With every flight you should feel that the drone is becoming more and more responsive and it tries to listen to your stick commands with the greater precision. More than that, at one point you might discover that the raising of those values by 5 is too much. Then if you really want to have a super precise tune, you can go with 2 or 3, but still remembering that we do not want to go into the zone where something oscillates. We want to be slightly below the oscillation threshold. Once you feel that you cannot really increase filter or the response or the dumping, only then it starts to think about the stability and to think about the aggressiveness. Stability basically is the equivalent of the I term. In majority of the cases, if you are flying something relatively standard from 2 to 10 inch even drones, you usually do not have to touch it. Of course, you might try to tune it to increase it a little, but then the factor that decides if the tune got better or worse it's not really the vibrations. If you notice that during the vertical descent into your own propos, the drone starts to wobble, that means that probably you have too much of the stability and you might try to lower this thing a little. The same thing might happen after rapid stop, after rolls or flips. But then we have additional mechanism that usually mask this thing, so it usually will not be really noticeable. If on the other hand, the drone wobbles slowly even in hover, then probably you have not enough of the stability and you have to raise it until you will hit the sweet spot when there is no wobbliness when stationary and no wobbliness when descending vertically into your own proposh. And finally, there is aggressiveness, which is the direct equivalent of the beta flight feed forward or the INAF control derivative. And this is just the value of how rapidly the drone should listen to your sticks. And because the aggressiveness is not really derived from the behavior of the drone, it's not taking
taking gyro into consideration at all, usually it is a personal preference. And that's the whole procedure. It takes one minute to test each of the values. If the battery lasts, for example, for five minutes and you have two batteries and you fly to verify each of the settings for like 30 seconds, you have at least a chance to modify 20 different combinations. And if something goes wrong, you should be able to detect that it really went wrong in only a few seconds after takeoff. And there's absolutely nothing to fear. Once you got your drone stable in the air with line of sight attempt, nothing really bad can happen because we are always modifying only one value at a time and verifying after the modification if it haven't made anything worse. In the description you should find an algorithm that describes the whole procedure, a framework for tuning. Just follow it and you should be golden. And here's the next video you should watch.